took a breath You had a plan for my every step You promised to always be by my side I believe that You are the way, you are the truth You are the lie, so I sing this to you Hi, I'm Graham, and today we're talking about integrity. Integrity is choosing to be truthful in whatever you say and do. It's really important to be truthful always. To be yourself. To not hide behind a mask. Okay, fine. Okay, I know what you're thinking. Something fishy's going on around here. Why is Graham wearing a mask? Well, I messed up, and I don't want you to see. I did something I wasn't supposed to and I'm embarrassed about it. But we are talking about being truthful. So here goes. I'm sorry. I can't do it. It's just it's too embarrassing. I borrowed my sister's super special hair shining shampoo even though she told me not to. Now I'm scared to let you see what happened. I'm such a such a scaredy cat. This is one of the reasons why being truthful in what you say and do is so hard. If I show people the real me, they might laugh at me or make fun of me. They might think I'm a bad person. They might not love me. Well, you know what? Integrity is worth the risk. <gasps> nope, I'm not ready. In today's story, we'll learn why being truthful doesn't have to be so scary. Y'all come back soon now, partners. I'm never taking this hat off. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, Inspired by the book of 1 John, chapter 1, verse 9. One of Jesus' closest friends, the Apostle John, shared important words from God in one of his letters. But God is faithful and fair. 
If we confess our sins, He will forgive our sins. He will forgive every wrong thing we have done. He will make us pure. Let's see how this truth might play out today. Tori could barely contain her excitement when she showed her dad the small plastic rectangle with her face on it, her brand new driver's license. See, I can drive myself now. If you had a car. Mom said I can borrow her car some days. If you pay for gas. If I pay for gas. Cell phone. Phone off while I'm driving. Tori held up her phone and shut it off. That's right, and. No passengers, no driving after 9 p.m., Full stop at every stop sign, music at a moderate volume. I got it. I guess you do. So can I borrow mom's car to go play tennis with Keisha? Please? Be home by nine. Thanks, dad. Even though Tori had been driving with her mom and dad for months now, her stomach did a flip when she first started the car. Driving carefully out of the driveway, her hands white knuckled on the steering wheel for the first mile until she pulled into the spot in the tennis courts at the high school. She was almost relaxed. Her best friend, Keisha, waved. <laughs> nice park job. Tori hopped out and checked her spacing. Yeah, okay, I'm a little crooked, but there's no one else here. The two friends played for more than an hour before Tori checked time. Oops, gotta get home. By the time Tori had stowed out her gear and fiddled with the temperature controls, Keisha was already gone. Here goes. As Tori backed the car out of the spot, she reached over to adjust the radio. I cannot deal with mom's music. Oh no. Tori braked fast. She put the car in park and hopped out. She had just hit the light pole and left a small dent in the bumper. It's not very big. Tori reached for her phone to call dad, but she had already turned off her phone for the drive. I I'll just tell them when I get home. Tori stayed tense the whole way home. Oh, they'll never let me borrow the car again but it's just a small dent, and mom's car is really old anyway. Dad was working on his Jeep in the garage when Tori pulled in. Hey, sweetie, how was it? Tori opened up her mouth to tell dad about the dent, but she couldn't seem to do it. Fine, great. My serve's getting a lot better. Tori avoided mom too. She tried to go straight to her room and read, but she couldn't focus. I might as well go to bed. Most evenings, Tori used a gratitude app on her phone as a reminder to thank God for the good things in her day. Uh, Friday, let's see. But Tori didn't want to think about her day or talk to God at all. Finally, she turned off the light, but even so, she couldn't fall asleep. Next morning, she came down to find dad making French toast. Maple syrup or strawberries and whipped cream. Both, where's mom? She went out to get groceries. Should be back any minute. As Tori sat down to her favorite breakfast, memories of the dented bumper started flooding back. I guess I'm not really that hungry right now. The garage door opened. Mom shouldered her way inside, carting heavy groceries. Would you believe it? Someone dinged my bumper in the parking lot and took off. Tori's heart sank. She wished she could simply disappear. Did you see it happen? No, and they didn't leave a note, hit and run. I'll take a look. Uh, Mom? Mom glanced up and saw Tori. Hi, Tor, I didn't mean to rain on your morning. What's up? Uh, nothing, I, I mean, I, I'm i gonna go out and rake some leaves. That would be super helpful. Rakes against the back wall. Tori couldn't meet Mom's eyes when she walked out the door. She raked as hard and as fast as she could but she couldn't sweep away what happened. It's not like I lied, ex exactly. Oh, who am I kidding? Unlocking her phone, Tori scrolled through her messages for a message from her small group leader, Lisa, that she'd sent weeks ago. Wanted to share. Oh, here's the verse. But God is faithful and fair. If we confess our sins, he will forgive our sins. He will forgive every wrong thing we have done. He will make us pure. Tori scanned the verse again and sighed. She dropped her rake and plopped right in the middle of her leaf pile. So, um, God, I really messed up. I mean, you know all about it, but I dented mom's car and I hid the truth. I lied. I'm really sorry. As Tori lay in the scratchy leaves, staring up at the bright blue sky, 
she felt a sense of peace for the first time all day. Thank you, God. After a few minutes, Tori scrambled to her feet, brushed the leaves off, and went towards the house. Mom, Dad, there's something I have to tell you. Tori knew she'd be paying to fix the car, and she might lose driving privileges for a while, but it was worth the cost to know she wasn't hiding the truth anymore. Being truthful with God keeps you close to Him. Anyone who lives with a blame walks safely, but anyone who takes a crooked path will get caught. I can trust God no matter what. A long time after Jesus died and came back to life, one of his disciples named John wrote this, God is faithful and fair. If we confess our sins, he will forgive our sins. He will forgive every wrong thing we have done. He will make us pure. Do you know what that means? It means with God, it doesn't matter if we've messed up or broken the rules or if we're embarrassed about something that we've done. We don't have to hide from him. He will forgive every wrong thing. With God, you can be the real you and he won't laugh at you or make fun of you. He won't think you're a bad person and most importantly, God will always love you. Yeehaw! Jesus died on the cross to take the punishment for all the wrong things you've done and all the wrong things you'll ever do. That's why when you're truthful with God, you don't have to be scared. In fact, here's the one thing to remember today. Being truthful with God keeps you close to Him. So when you mess up, don't hide it. Talk to God about it. Tell Him how you really feel. It should feel good to get all these things off your chest. Like, maybe it will feel good for me to show you what it looks like when you don't listen to your sister, and when you don't follow the instructions on a super special hair shining shampoo bottle. No, no, no way. <laughs> I'll talk to God about it. See you next time. Oh, lather, rinse, repeat. Lather, rinse, repeat. Why didn't I repeat, God? Why didn't I? Oh, oh, you saw nothing. Maybe once in a while You cover up an itty bitty lie with a big fat smile But an itty bitty lie still lying, that's not your style But stick to the middle of the path from mile to mile Maybe you want it real bad so you'd say okay. Maybe you make the promise but then you break Maybe you didn't learn the words so you fake it And you feel a little low But if instead you move straight ahead Keeping your promises You'll be living straight up If you move too far to the side then you're gonna get stuck Catch up Do what you say you're gonna do You'll be on your way up Said you're on your way up You'll be living straight up Maybe you've got a crew And you said we're gonna do the good things That good friends do and everybody's still a good friend who sticks like glue Cause everybody did what they said and everybody was true Maybe you wanted it but you didn't take it Maybe you promised and then you didn't break it Maybe you learned the words so you didn't fake it And now it Knows. But if it's
to you. 